Eva Gen 3 from Bowtech. Let's put it through the ringer. Hello and welcome back to the YouTube channel. I'm FJJ here with PodiumArcher.com looking at the new Gen 3 EVA from Bowtech. Uh, this one's coming out late because this didn't actually come in until after the Bose release, so I'm sorry I would have had it out sooner if I could, but it was not here in time. Uh, let's see, this Bose specs are... It's got a 24 to 29 inch draw length, an IBO speed of 326. For a bow that only goes to 29, that's pretty darn fast. Mass weight of 3.9 pounds. We're going to take the weights off and triple check and make sure. Uh, 28 inch axle to axle, six and one eighth inch brace heights available in 40 pound peak, 50 pound peak, 60 pound peak. Bunch of different colors, but honestly this green mint looking color is actually pretty cool looking. Uh, so they did incorporate the grip lock and time lock features off of the target bows into this new EVA Gen 3. They did not do a um, integrated sight system. But other than that, it's the same features it pulls over. Now, I'm not 100% positive. Actually, I should say I am positive of this. This cam and the cam that's on the uh, SR, yeah, the Core SR, have the same indent in them here. So I'm pretty positive this is the exact same cam that's on the SR. It just goes to 29 inches and 24 inches. And it feels the same when you pull it over into the far end of the draw cycle. So let's check some of our specs here. 29. Actually, I was using the yardstick for this part. You can see it easier. This thing's turning on me. Tighten it down a little better. There we go. So you can see it there. Okay. I'm going to go to the far end, the shallow end. So it looks like 28th and an eighth. 28 and an eighth. I'll write that down. 28 and 1 8. Let's check our brace. Use this. And if you measure to this, I'll flip it that way. Center of the string. To the back of the string, it's 6 and an eighth, so I guess I'll give it to you. That's pretty close. I should probably bring this over here so I'm not backing into the camera here. 6, 1, 8. See how long our overall riser length is to compare some of the others. Looks like about 27 inches on a 29 inch bow. That's pretty darn good. 27. Oh, I got brace height. Uh, amount of reflex. This looks close or dang near to zero. They're half inch ish, something like that. There you go. Mm, I'd say maybe three quarters of an inch of reflex. Three quarter. All right, let's. That's all our measury things there. Let's check our weight here. We got it. Let's see how many pounds it's at. We're going to be testing this bow at 50 pounds, so we're going to use 250 grain arrows to still give you that five grains a pound. And at some point here in the near future, because I keep getting comments in my stuff because people don't fully understand how speed tests work, it's 53, so we'll back it down a little bit. When you shoot at five grains a pound, the poundage of the bow is not relevant as long as you are shooting five grains per pound. It'll give you the same speed at 60 pounds with a 300 grain arrow, 50 pounds with a 250 grain arrow, and 350 grains at 70 pounds. So I intend to do a video proving that so we can like put that to bed and people can stop complaining about that. But that's what we have to use to get that weight on this 50 pound bow to try to get a fair speed test out of it. Oop. I was the limb pocket shifting because I didn't loosen the lock screw. Let's do that again. It's still too much. Yeah, their limb pocket system's awesome. It will actually hold the limb pocket from moving. And that's what that point was. You should loosen it. Let's see, before you adjust it. That means the limb lock actually did its job. Dun, dun, dun. 
50.8, we're still a little heavy. Half turn more should do it. Three. So close. Apparently these limbs don't back down very fast. Fifty point zero. There we go. All right, we should probably weigh the physical weight of this too. Let me lock these limb screws down. We'll weigh it with the dampeners and without the dampeners, just because I'm curious if this is actually close to the weight they say it is at 3.9. Well, we're weighing out at 4.2, so it probably is. Just for fun, let's take them off and see what it weighs. There's an Allen wrench screw down in there, and it looks like it's smaller. There it is. We'll put this back on for the testing, but just to see how much we lose. Also give us a good idea how what a set of orbital dampeners actually weighs. Because they do feel like some decent weight to them. I think that would make a difference in your physical weight. We got 0.1 pound probably for the arrow rest, maybe 0.2 max, oops. Nope, hang on. Something's not weighing right here. So it's saying four. And this bow is supposed to be 3.9. And that rest is a tenth of a pound. So this bow weighs 3.9 pounds. It is that light. All right, stick these back on and we'll go ahead and measure the draw length. All right, this bow is 29 inches because it doesn't go to 30 inches. So we're just gonna check and see what we run into for length. And honestly, it's like 29 to the front of the bolt hole. So if anything, it's like 28 and seven eighths. So it's a little shy of 29 inches. So speed wise, you're gonna get a real fair number on that. Cool. All right, I'm gonna run a couple arrows through here first for feel, and then we'll get the uh, vibration gauge out and see what kind of numbers we got for vibration. Just built these arrows up today. These are 250 grains, so they're five grains per pound. Cycle feels like almost exactly the same. That's pretty nice. Um, to the uh, the SR, I could call it, um, that has the same etched cam on it. So there's a bit of a hump in the back end of this. So it feels like it's kind of hard to break over at the end. I'm doing it slow on purpose so you can see it right there. Um, it does have a very short valley, but that's good for consistency. It's just if you relax, it may go forward on you. Uh, but I'm willing to bet if you shorten this bow up, it doesn't feel like that. It, that hump's probably gone. They probably got that in there towards the back end to try to get that extra little bit of velocity out. So this has got to be the exact same setup as the SR because it feels just like it. And that little back little bits. Uh. And it's not there in comfort, but it's only in performance. But we test all their bows in performance only now. Yeah, that feels good. Let's uh, get the vibration meter on there and see what it's doing. Okay, time to check some vibrations. We always put this in the same distance on every bow, so we're getting the same result of distance out from this mount. And that's on the number five spot. All right. Nine two nine. That is the lowest number we've seen. Right. Stop talking, you're gonna make it worse. <laughs> well sure, but we, you I gotta cut your audio out. Shut up. <laughs> it's more work. If we just wait a minute <laughs> if we just wait a minute and you stop talking, then I don't need to. All right, and I'm two.
1,209. So we'll give that an average of an 11. Turn it off. All right, first speed tests on 250 grain arrows, 50 pounds, 29 inches. Mind you, if you're gonna compare this against 30 inch axle to axle bows, you probably ought to add about 15 feet a second for the one inch in draw length comparison. But this is at 29. Three twenty one. Three eighteen. Three twelve. That was weird. I better shoot one more. 321, 318, then a funky 312, so we're gonna shoot one more and make sure we get one like the other sets. There's no way that's right. 315. All right, so we'll have to give it uh, a 318 average then. 350, 318, and then we're gonna shoot normally, oops, sorry, that's a 250. Normally we shoot 350, 450, and 550, but on light bows, we're gonna shoot 250, 350, and 450 because those are probably more relevant weights to actual usage at that lighter poundage so you have more accurate numbers. So shoot 350s and 450s and see what we get. All right, now we're shooting 350 grain arrows at 29 inches at 50 pounds. 273. 271, 271. So two at 271, one at 273, we'll call it 271. All right. Now 450s. I'll try not to break arrows in the target there. Two forty two, two forty, two thirty eight. So we'll call it two forty for our third one. All right, so let's see here. I use my colored pins. <sighs> Vibration was an 11. That's not, actually, hang on a second. Draw cycle, there's quite a bit of hump in that bow. Outside of that, it's very smooth. And like I said, if you shortened it a little bit, it wouldn't feel that way. So I can't give you a five on draw cycle, but I will give you, <sighs> that hump's pretty big. I'm gonna give you a three. Uh, grip's phenomenal, love the grip. Can't say enough good about the grip. I'd give that a five. Back wall is solid as a rock, I'd give it a five. Balance is, it's, it's, it's such a short bow, it's hard to have great balance in it. I think it's been positioned well, I'm gonna give it a four. And then physical weight, 3.9, and four, that short of a bow, that's, you could probably be lighter, being realistic. If you had a 28 inch axle to axle bow, you could probably pull off 3.8 or 3.7. So I'll give you a four out of five on that. But it is accurate, what they said is what you got. 28-inch uh, axle to axle is 28th and an eighth. Um, in a in a because these are comparable short ladies bows. I actually think short axle to axles on a, a ladies bow is actually just a fine thing, as long as you're over six inches of brace, or at six and up. And 28 axle to axle is not ridiculously short. It's probably fine. I would like to see the bow a little longer, uh, just because it would be a little more stable, more like a 30. But I'm sure the majority of people are looking for a little shorter bow there. Uh, six and an eighth brace on a ladies bow is great. I'll give that a five. 
the amount of reflex you got in there at three quarters of an inch. I need my other pen. Uh, three, under, under an inch of reflex is phenomenal. And on a hunting bow, I would give that a five for that bow. Actual draw was spot on. It was 29 and it actually measured out 28 and seven eighths. So that's one of the first ones I've seen that's actually short of physical length. So I got to give you a five for that because most people are always fudging the length long. All right, so five grains a pound on our test is 318 feet a second. Uh, right there, 318, averaging 326. For that bow at 29 inches, even if I gave it 15 more feet a second to be, it would be 330, be in the mid 330s. I'll give you a four out of five on that. You're within 10 feet a second, which is my requirement for saying you're doing your job correctly. And speed wise, I think you probably could have squeezed a little more out of that, but that's still a very good number. Tunability is superior, in my opinion, to everybody who makes bows as far as tunability. Has the timing lock, has the wheeling adjustability. You can perfectly orientate and set those cams and timing at the wheel like you really should be able to. So I'm giving you a five there. Uh, boom, features. Grip, the grip adjustability is cool, but they did not integrate a, uh, a V-bar on there and not a sight front, but the grip thingy is kind of cool. Other than that, I don't think there was any features. Let me grab the bow real quick. Hang on. Triple check, make sure I didn't miss anything. So as far as special features that aren't tuning related, I mean, it's the grip, really. And, oh, uh, rear mount rest, but there is no front mount sight and there is no integrated V-bar bracket. So I'm gonna give you a three out of five on features there. Uh, vibration 11, um, that's, I gotta give you at least a four on that. I did feel some vibration when I shot it too, so that doesn't shock me for how light it is that there was a little, little bit of vibration in it. I'm gonna give you a four out of five. Uh, 12.99 retail, 11.99 map. For this size, this frame, this dimension, I don't think it's ridiculous by any means. I don't think it's a steal. I think it's probably where it belongs. It probably needs to be about in that price point. So I'll give you, uh, I'll give you a four. Well, no, I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna give you a three. I'm comparing you mentally to other ladies' bows and that's a bit on the higher than most of them. I know I don't know if Hoyt's replacing their ladies' bow, but Hoyt's bow's cheaper than that by a pretty good amount. Um, Matthew's bow's cheaper than that by a pretty good amount. So you're up there a bit. I'm going to give you a three out of five on that. So I think that's all the categories. Yep. All right. So 5, 10, 15, 19, 22, 25, 29 on the high score. And on the MFO, you got 13, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 25, 30. So all in all, those are really good rankings for this bow. I'm sure this will be a very competitive bow in the, uh, in the short draw ladies market this year. And I will do a comparison amongst the major brands of their short draw bows when they're all out and on the market. And I know what everybody's making and compare them in a shoot down to determine which one I really feel is the better bow. But Comment down below on what you think of these bows and the style of video we're doing. Maybe you like it, maybe you don't. Um, it's, it's a pretty dang nice bow. Definitely if you're in the short draw length category or lady looking at a new bow, I would check it out. This does come in normal finishes too. You don't have to get this green one. Although personally, I think this bow looks really cool. So how about like and subscribe? Keep following along. Thanks for watching.